and welcome to Monday's Yarn Lane, the first Yarn Lane of the week. And how exciting is this that we have got Sincerely Louise on. Now, I've been wanting Sin Louise to come on air since we first started because I love her stuff. I first started, oh, several years ago. I bought my daughter Freya a, one of Louise's kits for knitting a fox hat. And she, I gave it to her Christmas morning by Boxing Day. It was all done and dusted and she was wearing it. Yeah. And she wore it all winter, wears it all the time. It's just gorgeous. And then she bought me a ram head kit just like this. And I've got it hanging just above my kitchen door. I bought her a fox head kit. And both of us have been fans of Louise's ever since. So I knew that you'd love it too. She is such a talented designer and she has the most fantastic range of animal stuffed animal heads. That's all I can say. I mean, obviously she does more things now, but this is what she started with, was these these animal heads. And they are beautiful. So there are so many to choose from. And um, we've Louise has a lot on her website. So it was really hard to choose. We've got two that are brand new. Brand new. We've got sheep. Sheep that you won't have seen anywhere else. So before we meet Louise, let me just explain. If you um, want to shop on Yarn Lane, you need to be on www.yarnlane.com. If you click on watch live, it works in exactly the same way as Sewing Street. You just scroll down. See, there we are. Scroll down. And then all of the kits and Louise's book are all there already. So the sheep, the one that's been highlighted now, are brand new. The black sheep, the white sheep and the mini sheep are all brand new and are already being sold now. Well, before the show, they're actually starting to be sold. The kits have got, we will go through them in a minute, but the kits have got everything you need, including the knitting needles in them. And they come in a lovely bag as well. Um, so that's if you want to buy. But remember, they are already starting to sell. So you do need to put them in your basket and check out. So welcome, Louise. Thank you for having me. So lovely to have you. So tell me, where did you get, tell me about the beginning. Where did you start? So I kind of um, started years and years ago and I learned to knit at university. Mm. Took over my whole life. Um, I graduated. Some of my work that I like knitted and put in my photography, like uni work went viral and it gave me the platform to kind of start my own business. Wow. And I could have been a photographer or a knitter, but I just fallen in love with it. Mm. So I was selling the finished pieces, I started doing that. And then I had like knitting magazines approach me saying, would you like to write some patterns? And I said, yes, I'd love to do that because I was knitting all my own things because I just couldn't follow other people's patterns. Right. Especially vintage, it's more vintage ones, I think. Yeah. Really yeah. struggled with those and I mm. couldn't get the things right that I was knitting. So I just started making my own. And yeah, I had some pub like, them published in magazines, went on to write some books. And here I am now, like, wow. My own so your book, First Time Knits, is this aimed at the beginner? Yes, this is my kind of beginner's book. So it's put my little ram down. brand new knitters out there. Um, I really like making easy patterns. So like, that's what I'm all about. I think if you can knit, purl, increase and decrease, you can make pretty much anything. And that's what the book covers. Okay, so it does take you from right from the very beginning. Yeah, it's got some really, really easy projects. So okay. Like things like phone cozies, which are really simple. They're just garter stitch, so they're knitted, <laughs> you know, just so a this straight is a line. Brilliant. Well, for a beginner or to buy for a beginner. Yeah, for a beginner. So a lot of people, like, you know, you can already knit, but you can always make a few projects from it that are kind of the harder ones. Like I've got a lion head. Well, in the there. lion that's behind yeah, the you. I mean, have you seen in the lion head on the wall? Yeah. And I got people we'll say to me, how can you put a lion head in a beginner's book? But it is honestly really easy to he make. Is gorgeous. So yeah. you've got the whole in the book. There's how to do the slip stitch, the knitting, mistakes. I like that. Yeah, the whole book focuses on um, like mistakes. Yeah, how, how to unravel. Yeah, how to unravel. I love so that. I taught four beginners how to um, knit, and they actually they're in the book, and you can see all oh, their projects. Okay. Yeah, so you follow their knitting journey, and you get to casting see casting off. So it's such a yeah. nice process. Thank you, and it comes with all videos. Um, online so you can either follow the book tutorials or oh, you okay and so it. these are your four beginners amala yeah. katie simon and zoe yeah and they all made things and then there's videos in here as well so yeah so there's a whole website with videos so you can either follow the pictures or follow me talking about it online and you've got the cup warmer yeah i've got the cup warmer that's <laughs> just here yeah. I love that. So that builds on the skills. So if you know somebody who wants to start knitting, yep. wants to have a go, this is ideal. Oh, even talks about tension. Yep, it's all about tension. You know, as as your knitters know, it's all about. It's all tension, about the yeah. tension. <laughs> but increasing, 
Yep. I think that's lovely. I think because, you know, a lot of the viewers for Yarn Lane can knit already, but not everybody. So it's really nice to have oh. something right from, from beginners. And then once you get through, we've got projects. I love the tiger scarf. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's really popular. I've seen one knitted in purple. It's <laughs> absolutely beautiful. He's yeah. so lovely. Thank you. So we've got the tiger scarf. So yeah, each the, it works like a course. So you, each project yeah. teaches you new skills. So it starts with basic knitting and casting and casting off. And you learn a new kind of skill with each project, like changing colour. Oh, look, and there's their tigers, stitch. all different yeah, colours as well. Yeah. Um, stockings, oh, we've got a bottle carrier. Yeah, I always have to have a bottle of water with me wherever I go. Obviously, <laughs> and he's a whale. Yeah. <laughs> and it's really lovely. It's a beautiful book, isn't it? Drop stitches, twisted stitches, turtle coaster. Yeah, that's Aww. lovely. Oh, and then you've got a picture of how these, so, you know, yeah. even, um, so it's really good for a beginner, but also if you can already knit, there's a lot of information in yeah, here, Yeah, there is. There? I mean, I learned so much from writing a learn to knit book just from the beginners. So they'd kind of come across these mistakes that maybe I'd taken for granted. That you hadn't really thought about. For years. Yeah, and just really simple like things that they'd asked me, I've incorporated into my newer patterns. And Bert like the lion. Yeah, this is Bert. I love him. He's so lovely. He's the only one like I have in my house, so I have an office oh. full of them, a whole wall of heads. Mm. But the lion is, he's in my front room. So oh, I know, no, he's day. lovely. He would look lovely in a nursery, wouldn't he, as well? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he just would, it's just sort of kind of wild animal thing. I just think he'd look nice. And a jumper. Yeah, I asked kind of my um, Instagram friends, what, what project would you aspire to make? And they yes. said like a jumper. Oh, so okay. I've made that the final project in the book for people that really want to make a jumper. Where's the sausage dog? Oh yeah, I've got him as well. Look, where's the sausage dog? I've got to find his, you know, he's here. I've got one as well. We've right got with him. Here is hot dog Can dog. Can you see it? He's a hot dog dog. He's not a hot dog. He's a hot dog dog. A hot dog dog. <laughs> He's just gorgeous. Yeah, and this one, I didn't even make this one. This is a um, sample from one of my knitters. So, oh, okay. yeah, this is made by like a beginner knitter <laughs> from the I book. Absolutely love the hot dog yeah. dog. I had two of them next to each other, and I asked my boyfriend, which one did I make? Oh, really? And he picked the one the beginner <laughs> made. So, and, and you went, do you know how long I've yeah. been knitting for? Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> so, it's really lovely that they can make these projects and they yes. look like the pictures. That's something I'm really kind of passionate about. Oh, he's yeah. just gorgeous, isn't he? Thank you. I love him. Oh, so the book is fantastic. So if you're a beginner to knitting or you know someone who's a beginner, this is brilliant. It looks like one of those really old fashioned annuals as well, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm really inspired by kind of 1970s annuals. Mm. And I have written another one that is based on annuals. So it's kind of, this is. Oh, and it's got a bobble hat in as well. I must have yeah. missed the bobble hat. No, it's really it's fun as well. It's not it's not like too full on, is it? No, that's why it works like a course. So you're just taking in those little bits of information yeah. with each one and building. Because it on is the complicated. You go onto the long tail cast on, so mm. you know it is teaching you a lot of really yeah. good techniques. But it takes you from the beginning. So that's on the website there, twelve ninety nine. If you want the book, over half the stock has gone. So if you do want the book, you need to get it in your basket. Right, let's talk about animal heads. Where where do we start one? Should we start with the sheep because yep. the sheep is new? Yes, the sheep is brand new. So I've never done a sheep. Well, I've done a tiny sheep. So, so why did you? Well, obviously I've got the ram, so I know all about the ram. So why did you decide to do a sheep? I think it's just lovely for springtime. I think it's like a lovely <laughs> spring knit. Spring. And also I've been using bobbles in loads of different patterns that oh, I've okay. been working on. So I was like, let's just keep on the bobble kind of. So I'll open train. the kit and then you talk us through yeah. what's in the kit. So if you hold up the giant, yeah, the giant. So we've got different sheep, okay, just yeah, so you know, this is the giant white sheep. Yes, it's yes. really lovely. Well, you can see how big he bobbles. is. And then you just hang him. If you turn him round, yeah. you see they have a backboard on them. Yes, yeah, so I have a specially made backboard and they've got a little, this is a new thing I've started doing, they now have a hole. And they used to have fishing line. Yeah, you might do, remember because yes. you've made Mine one. Has line. But I've taken that out now. So for anyone that's, you know, coming back to my kits, making mm. a new one, we've now not got the fishing line. It's got a little hole. So you can just pop it straight it onto a nail, nail. Oh, okay. on the wall and it'll sit like flat on the wall. So that's really exciting because it hasn't got that little extra bit of plastic, which has been annoying me for a few years. So <laughs> yeah, it's really exciting. Message from Karen. My goodness, I am in love with these. I need the sheep. Oh. I know, and I felt the same. I need the 
It is beautiful. It's just such a lovely size. So let's talk through. In the kit, you get, first of all, a beautiful Sincerely Louise bag with a logo on. Lovely canvas bag. And then what do we get inside? So we get all the yarn, which is... Oh, I think that's a mini one, that one. Oh, I'm on a mini one, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's fine. They're very similar in what you get in the bag. But right, yeah. this is giant. We'll come sorry. back to that one. <laughs> giant sheep. You get all the yarn. Let me take all the yarn out. Lovely. It's a very sort of ivory white, isn't it? Yeah, it's a really nice and shade. The and that's just gray. for the ear, yeah. So you've got for the, the silver ears. in the ears for the giant one. Um, you get the needles. Oh, they're nice. Yeah. They're even your own. Yeah, they've Sincerely got my name on them. The, the nine mils have my name on them. Yeah. Nine mil needles. Yeah. So we don't often put the needles in the kit. And I did discuss this with Louise. And I said, actually, this is such a lovely kit. And there was so... Because it really does have everything. I think nine mil needles might be something that people don't have as they're well. They're a really unusual size. But I think it, they're really good for getting the tension right on the kits. Yeah. Because they're slightly tighter than kind of other projects on the super chunky. So I think that it was worth putting it in. Yeah. The backboard. Yep, the backing board. That's got the pattern That's inside. the pattern. Yep. And then, I'm not going to take it all out, but that's all the stuffing you need to go in. And the bag. And in this little bag here, I'm just going to do it very carefully, but I want you to see what you do get. You get... I won't open these for every kit, but you get the black wool for the nose. Nose, yep. The That's white. to sew the board on. Mine's done in a slightly different colour. For sewing straight. the board on. But yeah, you sew the board a on. A needle. Yep, you've got to have a little plastic sewing needle. You will needle. need the needle. And yep. the eyes. Yep. So the, this is fantastic. So everything you need, I mean, literally everything, including the needles, is in the pack. So you can make the whole thing. And that's the giant sheep. £40, everything you need, and the pattern. Um, are, is in there. Now, the sheep is also available in black because every family has a black sheep. Yep. <laughs> I think I was a black sheep when I was growing up. I, oh, were I, you? I, well, I was a goth, so I was a teenage goth. So oh, okay. I used oh, to get lots of presents. There. Yeah, I've got the pattern here if, rather than you opening it. Oh, okay. So that's the I pattern. I have to show it as well here. So the patterns. If you put it down on the table, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah the table. There we, can there we go. Perfect. There we go. So and it's even got my little sheep logo. I've changed it to a sheep Aww. for these patterns. They're not on the kit bags, but for these patterns, I've got a little, little sheep on it there. Right. Do you want to show us the black sheep head? Um, so the giant one. So the giant sheep kit is exactly the same as the white one. Yeah. Only it has black wool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he's got the silver. And I've also got a bit of silver on the nose instead of black because I thought, you know, mm. you're not going to see it otherwise. So... Got a little silver he's nose, gorgeous lovely. isn't he i mean we are all limited on the black sheep because i thought the white would be more popular but i love him so i love all of his bobbles as well yeah they're really nice and they're not too hard to make the bobbles because i've made them as easy kind of oh, okay. to do a bobble they're only little ones so once you've done a few of them you'll be fine if you haven't done one before right those are the giant ones but we've also got mini sheep so the mini cream sheep, who I've got here, look at him. I love this one. Look at him. Her. Her, yeah. This is a girl. Well, it could be a boy, but the boy's the ram. Yeah. But she's beautiful. So these are flying out, these mini ones. So there are less than 20 less. So if you want one of the mini ones, look at the little face. I'm sure everyone's like really excited because I had a competition on my Instagram right, to name yes. the sheep. So, so yeah, Louise has been running this competition for a couple of weeks now. Yeah, a week or so, yeah, to come up with names. I've had so many Have you? good ones. Yeah, I've got some honourable mentions because I couldn't pick them all. So, okay. Yeah, we've got Meryl. That was really good. Meryl yeah. Sheep. Meryl Sheep. That was very close. Love Meryl Sheep. One of my favourites was Barbarella. <laughs> <laughs> that was really nice. Barbarella. Yeah, Barbarella. Uh, Brittany Shears was quite fun. Love that. Yeah. Brittany Shears. Oh, that's fantastic. Rosemary came up a few times, <laughs> which is interesting. But uh, my favourite one was Eunice. Eunice? I had that one a few times, but uh, the first person to say it was Kaylee Quinn. So um, okay. I'm going to give her a kit. And she wins a whole yeah, sheet kit. Yeah, she wins group. a whole sheet kit. So, oh, well, congratulations, yeah. Kaylee. It's a great name. Yeah, it's really nice. So Eunice, we can finally Eunice, call her by the name. Sheep is now Eunice, the sheep. Eunice the yeah. sheep. 
Uh, is that just the cream sheep? Well, yeah, the, it was for the big one, the competition. Mm. So maybe maybe I could name some of the other ones Barbara. <laughs> yeah, you should yeah, do. Should Meryl, maybe this one could be Meryl Sheep. Yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Eunice is the winner, yeah. so congratulations. That's fantastic. And it's so nice that you've launched the sheep on air as well. Yeah, it's really they exciting. They are beautiful. So you can buy the mini sheep. Right, so when you've all checked out of the white mini sheep, there are only 14 left. Wow. So and everything you need is in here. So we've got the yarn, the backboard, the needles, the, the bits, the eyes, needles. Oh, these are smaller needles. Yeah, they're obviously. on the five, so it's knitted on okay. the smaller needle. Um, the pattern for both the big and the small is exactly the same so you get the same pattern booklet that i've got oh, okay. here but it has like variations so it's got the information for the mini and the giant so once you've made a giant one you can go on and make a smaller one oh, as well wow. using the same pattern you just need a different board and the board and is the in here as well yeah. so everything you need for the mini sheep is in there there's also a mini black sheep that's on the shelf behind you yeah really like the it? yarn yes can't leave you out can we you <laughs> Now, we've only got, I've got to find him, three mini black sheep left if you want him. I love the yarn. It's so nice. It's the stone washed and it's got white flecks that run through the black, so it really picks up the colours in the sheep. So, absolutely. Now, love I want to show the yarn. The mini, yeah. Look at the yarn. That's gorgeous, isn't it? So, this is extremely popular. Wow. Yeah, I'm not surprised. It's so cute. I just love it. Maybe this one's going to come. Back to my house yes well. maybe that would have come yeah. back with you <laughs> um so let's do the ram next we'll do the giant ram we've gone we'll have got through all of them in a minute yeah um so the next one's the giant ram now this was this is my favorite i love the giant ram he hangs above my kitchen door inside not outside and everybody went because my kitchen door's opposite the front door so whenever they come in the house oh. it's the first thing they can see That's he's lovely. gorgeous i love him and mine is this color as well so in the kit, obviously, you get exactly, you get, you get yeah. all, you, all you need. I've got to find him because they're all labelled. There yeah. we go, there's the giant ram. So you get, what, what's the yarn in here? It's really soft. It's, it's Peru by Shrek. So it's 20% alpaca. Yeah, it's got 20% alpaca, which gives it a really nice softness and tactileness to the knit, I found. So you get the alpaca yarn. Let me just, there we go. Um, and then you get the white, which is for the, the main part of the head. Yeah. And it's exactly the same as the sheep. You get all the bits and pieces for the eyes and sewing it together. You get the backboard and you get the big thick needles and you get the stuffing. So it's exactly the same as the sheep, but just all the, all the bits you need for it. Yeah, it's Lovely. one of my most popular ones around. So it, is like, it? Yeah, when I do knitting shows, people just... Well, you know, you've got one. Everyone, yeah, no, I've everyone got one comes exactly. over and they, they absolutely love the ram. It's one of my favourites. Yeah, I think I like, like the sheep. <laughs> liking the sheep now. So that's the giant ram, but there's also a mini ram. Now, over half of the stock of the mini ram has gone, so I'm going to hold him up. Look. Oh, that way. It's a little, little face. Lovely. Now, he's got a quite a variegated... Yeah, that's wool. the same wool. It's a stone washed, so it's got the white yeah, flecks that okay. run through. It the works colours. really well for the horns, doesn't it? It works. I just love it. It's one of my favourite yarns to use. It's kind of got a cotton. It's like cotton base, I think. So it gives a knit a really nice structure, and it also gives the lovely flecks of white. Yeah, that's really lovely. So that's got everything. I mean, I've got the kit here, which I won't take out because. But obviously, it's got everything you need. It's got the backboard and all the yarn and the eyes and the pattern and. And there's only five left of that one. So if you want that, you need to get it. And then finally, and then we can get on to showing how to do it, is the baby fox. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. There's a good question from Karen. Um, I had one of the Sincerely Louise fox scarf a few years ago it was fantastic oh yeah that was more <laughs> my first knitting pattern i oh, ever did was it? the fox scarf yeah and it went onto the front of a magazine i had never written a pattern really? i was so excited to do it and, and then i got offered a book deal based on that scarf <gasps> wow and it went into my very first well it's book. obviously you know the you obviously resonate with people yeah there must be so, there's something about your designs that people yeah. just love i mean look at that yeah and lorraine says 
just bought the giant ram's head cannot wait to get started just love him it's brilliant and honestly they're really quick as well yeah they are aren't they yeah they cut they do knit up really quickly and chunky it's just like oh the best thing karen's question before we get going can i ask what level they are if you can do the basic stitches, increase and decrease, could you make them? Yes, so I believe if you can knit, purl, increase, decrease, you can pretty much make anything. That's what I believe in yes. as a designer. All of these, they don't have any colour changes. Like the fox, okay. I've been working on the patterns now. So I used to have a few colour changes with Intarsia, but I've taken them out and it just gives the appearance of a colour change. So the ears are just the way they're knitted and I can go through it with the sheep head because I've brought one with me. Oh, okay. They look like a colour change, but they're actually not. It's just knit and purl and, you know, changing colour at the start of a row. But there's no, like, tricky knitting in them at all. Okay. I think the sheep, it's got a bobble, but once you can make one bobble, you can make then you can, yes, all the exactly. bobbles. So, yeah, they're really, really easy to knit. I, well, I think, as I think the instructions are really clear as well. So when it comes to the making up as well. Yeah. So that is all the kits. Now you've got all those. Um, I'm, Louise is going to show us how they work, but at least you've seen everything. This is gorgeous. I don't I have no idea, which is my favourite. So where where should we start with this? I don't. Well, I could do some basics if you want. I can yeah. do some sewing up. I can. Yeah, let's do what, some sort of basics yeah, of where yeah. we get started. So if okay, someone's cool. thinking of buying the kit or they've bought the kit, what other than taking it all out of the bag and then trying to decide what they're going to do with their bag first? Right. So yeah, basically they're really really easy to knit. So all my patterns I tend to write. Um, all of the um, even, oh, odd rows, there we go. So I include every odd row, because every even row is a purl row. So okay. you're always purling back, like every, Easy, yeah. Then. So you just, every row has been included, every odd row has been right. included. And then you can just tick them off as you go. Or you can use a row counter, they're really easy. I don't have any knit till it measures this and do that or repeat okay. this seven so you just times. tick off each row you as you go along. just tick off each row as you go. They're, they're really nice to follow. I tend to use a long tail cast on, but you can also use the two needle cast on as well, kind of mm -hmm. with the two different needles, which I do have videos for both. So if you ever get stuck on the patterns, you can use the videos I've made for the first time knits book and kind of bring the techniques that I use into oh, patterns. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I would tend to use a long tail cast on. Oh, sure. Yeah, because a lot of people might not have done that. So okay. how do you do that? So you just grab the wool. You can measure it to see the amount that you kind of need. But I'm just going to wing it, so you, you want to use more than less, really. So, yeah, I'm quite, I'm quite a rogue knitter, is how I would describe myself. Yeah. I like coming up with the patterns more than, yeah. Totally. Than the actual knitting. Yeah. I know, but you obviously can knit, because you've knitted yeah. these. So I, tend to, I hold the wool kind of in my hands, so I've got the yarn coming from the ball going over my thumb, over my index finger, and then coming out between these two fingers here. And then I kind of get it into this claw position, which I, I call it sort of a claw. Then I bring my needle down and towards me. I catch the yarn coming from my thumb to my fingers. So I come towards and it makes a star shape. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to bring the needle up and towards me through the middle of the star. And that creates a stitch on our right needle. Then I just move my thumb and I pull the yarn down. And I get back into that kind of starting position, ready to start again. So it's this is one of the hardest things, I think, in knitting. Right. I go through it really slowly in one of my videos. So if I'm going oh, through okay. it too quickly here and it looks tricky, it's because it is. <laughs> so usually, but once you kind of get the hang of it, you can Yeah, so once you get really, through really that fast, right, yeah. left, yeah. then it's fine. So yeah, it's, it's quite a tricky cast on, but then again, if you, if you don't know how to do it, you can use the long tail, no, the two needle cast <coughs> So what's on. the purpose of the long tail? It just gives you your first row of knitting and it also gives you a nice elasticated edge. Ah, oh, okay. If you're going to knit a hat or, you know, a garment mm. from the bottom, it's nice to have that stretchy edge. So I always recommend the long tail cast on, but if you do do it, you have to account for that being your first row. So when you turn the needle around, you're going to be on row two. Okay, that's but with cast, normal thing. cast on, that's not your first No, row. normal cast on with the two needles, then then you do row one and I guess back. because you're doing two movements, so you're doing sort of cast on and a row, because yeah. it's the two movements. But as long as you watch the video back, yeah. or you, you can watch this back on YouTube from tomorrow, it'll be back on. So when you get your kit back home, you can just follow it, just keep you winding it. Yeah, well, yeah, I recommend, my yeah, not to push my videos, but yeah. they're, they're really slow, really good. I go over it really, really slowly. Okay. So. They're really nice. For and where can they find that? Oh, that's on the First Time Knits website. Right. Okay. And also on YouTube. So, But if you find me on Instagram or then, whatever, then all my links are on Then it'll all be in there so you can yeah, watch yeah. it back. Okay. Yeah. So I use the kind of cast on the first row. And then because that was my first row, I'm now on row two. So I'm going to purl this row back. 
And you've got to be careful not to use <laughs> your long tail. That's the first thing. Oh, rule. I do that so many yeah. times with knitting. And then you get five stitches yeah, down you're in. and you realise you've used yeah. the wrong one. So if you have left a really long tail, I trim it down to about 10 centimetres and after weave into the edge okay. right, when you've done it. So then I would just purl. So um, I'm going to go through the purl stitch and then I'll get back onto the knit row. So you need to go left just a tad, just a little. That's yeah. perfect. There we go. So I'll just whisk through the back. There we go. So it's just as simple. I mean, all in a tangle. There we go. It's as simple as kind of knit and purl. So all of my patterns are used like KFB stitch. That's a really important one that I use, and that's an increased stitch. Right. So the most of my patterns will start row one and two, and then row three will be K1, KFB three times, K1. Or, yeah, that's what okay. I've got there. So when I'm what does working... does KFB mean? Yeah, I'll go through it now. <laughs> now. So in my patterns where you see a K followed by a number, that's the number of stitches you need to knit. So that K1 means knit one. one. Very okay. simple. And then a KFB is knitting into the front and the back of the same stitch, and that increases the stitch from one to two stitches. So you start by knitting into the front like you would a normal stitch, and then you go into the back. And that's important to go into the right place on the back and not through the front of the stitch again, but you're going to go through the back of the stitch, wrap the yarn around, push it down and towards you, and that increases the stitch. And it gives a bump on the kind of left-hand side of the stitch, and that's what I want to achieve with it. Like It's not like a make-one stitch, which is kind of invisible. I like the the bump is a feature okay. within my yeah. designs. You can kind of see on the faces, kind of with the ram and the sheep and of the other ones, they've got the lines running through them, and that's kind of what I'm achieving yeah, with so the that KFB is part stitch. Of, yeah, that's yeah, the part, part of the, the whole design. design is that bump. Yeah. And then my KFB, I've got that, doing that three times, so then I just repeat that twice yeah. more. Turn him around. And then my final instruction is a knit one, so then I knit the last stitch, and that's row three done. Wow. And yeah, so with these lovely big chunky needles, it's nice and quick, isn't it? It grows really fast. So <laughs> even on the, well, the small ones kind of take, they're probably even quicker because the wool's smaller. So there's less hand this movement. This fox has got a really, he's got the same stone wash yarn, hasn't he? That's river wash and oh. stone wash together. So there's two. Okay. They're, they're part of the same family, but it hasn't got the white yeah. through it. It's got like another yellow tone, which is really lovely. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. That's just getting distracted by foxes. Right. They were talking to me. And then I'm all, it's, all my patterns say pearl all even rows, unless I've got something really exciting happening on a pearl row, which I don't tend to. Right. So whenever whenever you finish your odd row, so row three, then you're onto a pearl row, and you're just going to pearl that row back. So that's quite nice. You sort of do all the complicated bit on the um, yeah on the knit row. And you just yeah pearl it back, and you just want to make sure you've got the same stitch count as what I've asked for in the pattern. That's very important. <laughs> you don't want to be adding any extra stitches. No. So that's how my patterns work with. The next row is KFB K1. So you're increasing up in kind of okay. increments. And that's how you kind of create the shape of the pattern. So I've worked all of that out for you and you just follow it and yeah. then you create the pieces and you make the And pattern. then you join them all together. Yeah. I can show you the uh, bobble stitch as well yes, if you like. Because I've got some sewing up to do as well. Lovely. Yeah, and it'd be good to see the bobble because the yeah. sheep the sheep's got the bobbles, the yep. mini sheep and the big sheep. Yeah, all the sheeps have bobbles. So my bobble stitches are really easy to do. So you knit. There's the bobbles. Yep. Because all knit, sheep have bobbles. Yeah, of course. You knit up to the point of the bobble. So, you know, knit to bobble one. So I do a, a K, F, B, F. So I knit into the front of the stitch. I knit into the back of the stitch. I knit into the front again. Oh my gosh, I'm going crazy. <laughs> So now I've increased my stitch from one to three stitches. Right, which is quite a lot with yeah, a so thick yarn. Yeah, it's quite a lot. So with some bobbles, you can increase them even more, make them bigger. Or, But okay. for me, I just turn the work at this point. So I've got the wrong side now facing towards me. Then I just pearl my three stitches back. So only the three that I created for the increase. And then I turn the work one more time. So it's back towards me. And then I just knit these three stitches together. So like a knit two tog, I do a knit three tog, wrap the yarn around, bring it towards me, off the needle, and it creates that bobble stitch there. And you might want to give it a little extra pull at this point. Well, just to, to sort of push it yeah, through just to, to the keep front. It, well, just to kind of keep it nice and tight, because if you leave them really loose, you can get gaps between them. Oh, and okay. it might show the stuffing more on the bigger ones. 
So when it comes to stuffing, you just don't overstuff them and, and they're fine. And then it's fine, yeah. Yeah. And that's how you make the bubble. So that's one bubble there. So once you can make a bubble, you can make That makes it bubbles. really interesting though, doesn't it? Yeah. There's not, I think that's what I like about them. There's not sort of knit 20 centimetres. Is no, <laughs> I don't mind some patterns like that, but I think, because mine are really shaped, it's really yes. important to just follow the rows and that's where, that's all the work that I do. I'm working that pattern out yeah, for you. That's all done. So you just can sit and follow it, tick mm. it off. You'll have a sheep head in no time. I know, that's the joy, isn't it? I think it's that, the, that's the time that the, all of this takes, doesn't it? It's how many sheep you've made <laughs> yeah. to have got to this stage. Yeah. And that's how many bits where you've worked, oh, that doesn't work, that doesn't work. Yeah, lots of unravelling. I think, yeah, they, they weren't too hard to design these ones. So I think I had so much fun with them. Mm. And I just kept making them and just making, making more and, and make, more. Yeah, I've got a half finished one here as well. I've got one at home that's half finished. I just love making sheep. Yeah, you need to. Yeah, yeah you need to. <laughs> and then you could have them all around the house as well. Yeah. <laughs> so the big sheep is the one that's on the left hand side in the main graphic that's 40 pounds and then the mini sheep is the one on the right so the mini black sheep is sold out and the mini cream one there's only 12 left so if you do want a mini cream you need to check out and they, they are, are exclusive with you at the moment <gasps> so they're not launching on my website for a couple of weeks Ooh, so, so if you want to be with first people that, and that's the them, big one and that's all of them all, all the sheep, of the sheep. Yeah. So you won't be able to get the sheep anywhere but here for a couple of weeks. And then that's it. Yeah. I need some time off to do some knitting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Louise definitely needs some time off. She's been doing a lot lately. I'm trying to get hold of yarn. Yeah, that's it's like gold dust. It really it is. It is. It's a, really hard at the moment. So you've knitted now a whole sheep. Yeah, just while you were talking, I've knitted this yes. whole, <laughs> yeah. whole Why are sheep. Why just running wow. through that? That's how quick. <laughs> <laughs> She's done it. She's done it. Yeah, so um, this is my sheep now finished. Um, so I have the top and the under piece. So when you come to make them, I'll ask you to make a top piece and an under piece. And you'll know which is the top piece because it has stitch markers. Right. And that's a really important part of my pattern. So you just need a bit of scrap yarn or some stitch markers. Mm -hmm. I use scrap yarn just because it's there, it's easy to use. It's not going to fall off, yeah. what, you know. And then I'll ask you to add them at certain stitches. So I'll say knit four and add a marker to the fourth stitch. Yeah. And once you've knitted that stitch and it's on the right needle, mm. you just tie a bit of scrap yarn onto it. Yeah. And that's where it's gonna we're gonna put the eyes and the ears so that when you come to sew them up, you don't have to worry about measuring or anything like that. Yeah, because that's quite hard, particularly with something shaped like this. Yeah. And then you try and follow the photo, but you're mm. not absolutely sure. I've done that before with things. Yeah. I'm trying to count the stitches in okay. the photo. <laughs> I know I've yeah. no idea where to put yeah. this, but with this, it's easy. It's good because that's why they scale up and down really well because they're the same right. pattern and it just you know makes them smaller. So once bigger. you've got the sheep kit, you could knit. You can make the small you one. You can yeah, make the, the small same one pattern. As well. Yeah, the sheep and the ram, you can use the same pattern. Okay. Yeah, the fox is just the mini at the moment. Right. But you could, it will scale up it easily. Will scale yeah, up. I just need to knit one myself <laughs> to, to make, make sure. sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I can show kind of sewing up uh, with this one. Yeah, right, do. I can just bob down and get my uh, mm -hmm. sewing up. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, when you come to sew them up, I like to start by kind of oh, get my pattern. I don't need that. I know how to do this. <laughs> I bet you've sewn yeah, up loads of I've these. I've sewn up so many of these. So when you start sewing them up, you just need your top and your under piece. And you're going to place them together so that the cast on edges meet. And those are the, the thinnest parts where the snout is. And if you've left cast on tail that's long enough, which I obviously do because I have my giant long yeah, cast on. giant long cast on. Yeah. And that's the end of the nose, which I guess is the yeah. same with the rams. So yeah, this, the same, this, this was the same of all of the heads. They all use the same technique where you sew them up in this yeah. way. So yeah, once you can sew one up, you've got to sew them all up. And you're going to start by sewing up using the horizontal mattress stitch. So you're going through like a stitch along horizontally along the cast on edge and then you match it to one on the other side and you go through the whole stitch kind of both parts of the stitch horizontally and then you go through the next one horizontally and you repeat that and there's only five stitches along here so you've not got many to sew up horizontally or if you're really struggling with it you can use back stitch okay. on the wrong side but horizontal mattress stitch it's like when you add a seam onto it like a jumper so that way you've sewn up kind of your very, very start there. I've got a few tails, but... So now no, the nose is done. Yeah, the nose is neat. And then you just pull it. That's my favourite part. Just give it a nice pull. And that'll bring the piece together. If you pull it too tightly, you can always pull it back. Mm. So, yeah, give it a good pull. Now they're together. Yeah. Then all you're going to do is bring the two pieces 
so they now match. And at this point, I recommend pinning or tacking it, but I, you know, I've done this so many times. Okay. I'm just going to go for it. And as you turn it. But you it, could, would you pin it or tack it sort of all the way along? Yeah, I'd kind of, I can tack it if, you know, for good, for good practice. <laughs> <laughs> if you like, but yeah, I would just um, tack yeah, all no, the way. Yeah, that's fine, we'll just, just show us. Yeah, you just kind of tack them all the way along. Just to make sure it's in place before yeah, you do the. along one side, yeah. Amala, who works for me, she's going to say, why didn't you tack it? So, yeah, I'll do it for you, Amala, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you've done it loads, so you know what I you're know. looking for, don't you? Yeah. And it's a bit like, you know, with people saying some people pin, some people don't pin. Yeah, I and think pins are quite hard on the, I think for the mini, that's fine. Yeah, but for they the can super chunky, disappear. Yeah, you're going to lose them. So just grab a bit of wool and yeah, this is how you should do it. <laughs> <laughs> but you've done it loads. I know. So it's all sort of sewn wrong sides together then yeah you place the wrong sides together because you're sewing up with mattress stitch so you don't have to have it inside out okay and i just love mattress stitch like a lot of people like they love doing the knitting but they don't like sewing up and i hear it over and over and over mm. again but with mattress stitch there's something just so fun about it i could just i'm happy to sew up a giant piece of knitting because this isn't mattress stitch, this is just me tacking. So, <laughs> yeah, there you go, I've tacked it now. Look, this is how you're Look supposed to do it. That's how you're supposed to do it. Yeah. <laughs> but that's very quick, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's um, very quick. Yeah, I should have should have just done that. <laughs> 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 and then you could just take your yarn. So you want to use the same tail that you used to um, sew up this piece. So if you've got your cast, off cast on tail that's long enough, you can use that or you can use a new piece of um, the kind of M yarn, which okay. is the main color. And then you're just going to go, you're going to be sewing up along the side. So you need to pull the knitting and find the bar in between the first and second stitches. Okay. And you're just taking your needle and you're going under that bar, pulling it out. And then you're finding the one on the opposite Can we side. we get a bit closer on that, Elliot? Yeah, it's really hard to see. That's better. Well, you see, because it's hard if you don't, if you haven't done this, to see where the bar is is mm. really useful. Once you've okay. found it, yeah. Yeah, so you're going through, you're pulling those stitches apart and you're going to go through the bar in between the mm. stitches and then you go to the other piece and you pull it and you're finding that bar and you're going to go through that. And then what you can do, which is probably better, is you can go two bars at a time, which is going to save you a lot of time when sewing up. Mm. So rather than going through one bar, you go through two bars oh. and now I've just doubled my sewing up speed. <laughs> So, so is it? So can you do two all the way along? Yeah, you can do two as long as they match up. That's you want to always make sure that that's why you tack it in place. Okay. You want to make sure because otherwise, if you if you go the wrong way, you can have one end that kind of is a lot longer <laughs> than the other. So that's why you should always tack. Always tack when you sew and up. And then you can do two bars. Then you can do two bars. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't, you have to do one bar. Yeah, but sometimes I if I do find that it's coming, you know, a bit. Off, I'll go through one bar and then two on the mm. other side, but that's kind of a bit naughty, and I shouldn't. <laughs> I shouldn't. I don't recommend that. Yeah, that's because you're a rogue knitter. Yeah, like I said, I'm very, very rogue knitter. Yeah, but the whole thing of knitting and crochet, whatever, it's about enjoying it, isn't it? Yeah, that's what you I know, tell people. Are there right and wrong ways? Oh, I don't know. know. Well, I think there's two types of crafter. There's someone that will, you know, knit something really long, spot a hole at the very beginning, pull it all the way back, <laughs> and then there's me, and I'll just stick a sequin on it. <laughs> No one's going to know. I like that. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure which I'm. Yeah. I'm probably the one who can't re notices it five rows in yeah. and 20 rows in decides to unpick Ooh. and should have done it five rows yeah. back but thinks I'll be fine but then gets annoyed yeah. with it. I think that's why I'm, I like these. The, I like. So there's only six mini sheep left if you want a mini sheep. But there are big sheep. Eunice. Yeah. There are there is stock left of Eunice and Eunice's friend. <laughs> <laughs> the black yeah, sheep. We need to give them the Eunice's names. friend that she doesn't speak to yeah. anymore. <laughs> I quite like the idea of the black sheep. Yeah, it's really nice. And then once you've sewn it you just pull it. And like see I've pulled it a bit tightly there. But if that's that happens, magic, you can't even see that can't seam see it at, at all. all. If you give it a good pull you can see it. But yeah, but like on the ram, you can't you see. Can't. I might have even sewn that up in a different colour. So, because for the, in the instructions, like you do use different colours. So if you pull it tight, like far enough, you might see the stitching. But 
Yeah, you can sew it up in I a different colour. I can feel where the seam is, but yeah. I can't see it. It's really amazing. I just love that map. Yeah, stitch. because the actual, the the rows of stitching just go together. Yeah. So I can f you can feel it, but you definitely can't see it. Mm. And the people, sure a lot of people ask me if this. they're knitted in the round or anything like that, and they're just not. They're just seamed together with the mattress stitch, and that gives you those lovely seams. Mm. You still looking? Yeah, it's neater than mine. Neater, but mine hangs above the door, so you can't see it too close. It's mm. <laughs> there you go. So I'm sewing. So you just sew all the way up to the cast off edges, like that. There we go. Give it a pull. There you go, and as you go, you can kind of un untack it or you can just leave it until the end. So, how often do you pull it? I don't know, like you can wait. I, I pull it kind of, oh, it's just a feeling, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I'd keep, I'd keep, you can even pull it as you go, but I just love leaving it that bit of time. Just so that it, that I just like to see it all come see together. it all come together. Yeah, it's like magic. And are the mini sheep? Is it the same sort of size, the same pieces, but just yeah, smaller? Yeah, they're exactly the same pieces, just smaller, and that's it. But the all the sewing instructions are the same, apart from a few kind of measurements on the nose. Yeah. But yeah, they they follow the same instructions with the pattern and the sewing up, but it's the woolen needles that change size. Uh, okay. Not not anything yeah. else. So that's why they're really lovely. You can make them a whole family. I know, you could have them all hanging on the wall, couldn't you, with names on them yeah. as well. I think it's nice. And then you can name them after people in your family. <laughs> and then the one who's the black sheep will be yeah. not very pleased. <laughs> I don't know, there's nothing wrong with being an oddball, no. is there? Well, no, <laughs> everyone's got one. Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't know the oddball, it's probably you. It's probably so, yeah. it's you, if you're not sure who that one is, it's you. <laughs> there we go. So now I've sewn up all of one side of my sheep. It's looking lovely. That's I can pull really my lovely. tacking wool out. And all these bobbles are lining up. Yep, all the bobbles line up. There we go. So I've sewn up one side there. And then I would just turn it the other way. And I would always try and weave into the inside seam if I can. Right. So there's no point. So how do you weave in? I've decided for now I'm going to ask everyone. Because I struggle with knowing. And nobody, everyone says, so when you weave ends in, how do you do it? You kind of go through the stitches on the side. And through a few times. So I keep following it up, but you know, if I'm in a rush, I'll just and how push it far would you go down? And well, I think I go through it a few times, maybe. Okay. There, I don't know. Again, it's just until you feel safe with it. Like it's not going to go anywhere because it's on the inside of the piece. True. True. So yeah, the the I just we always weave into the inside seam rather than the back of the knitting because. That's what it's there for. You might as well weave yes, into it. Yes, you might as well it. use it. That's true. Because I guess all of this sewing is on seams anyway. You yeah. haven't got... Um, well, I, I suppose the only edges, maybe you've got a, one on the you've top You've got edge. the cast-off edge. <coughs> but that goes around the board. You're going to sew that onto the board, yeah. But yeah, I've got... That's how you sew it up. And then... Right. Then you do the other side. Mm -hmm. And then you stuff it. But I can also show you the ears as well, if you like, really okay. quickly. Because they're really How long nice. have we got left? About three minutes. Three minutes. I'll have to come back and yeah, do no, some more because I've got yes. loads left to show because you. Because so. we have got other animals, <laughs> other animals. But I thought, let's just stick to sheep and a fox. Yeah. <laughs> Don't put them in the same. Sheep and a fox. Please. Well, otherwise there's too much. And yeah. We'd be, able to st we'd be talking about kits. We're not talking about knitting. So once you... Yeah, yeah with the... <laughs> Show us, show us an ear then. Yeah, with an ear. So the ears I've changed actually. So this is really good for anyone that's made one of my kits before. Mm. Before I would kind of give you four ear pieces and then you sew them together like with the sheep head and then along the top. But now I've changed the pattern. This is very exciting because I've spent a long time on this. Uh, okay. In my house I have um, lots of different ears <laughs> <laughs> on different shelves. You know, bits of their ears. Um, so now I've knitted part of it in the cream, the other in the contrast colour and a little bit at the top, and then just fold it over. Oh, wow. And then you sew it together using the mattress stitch up the sides. And what that does is the, the back of the ear is slightly larger, that, that knitted piece. And then what happens is it gives you the appearance of oh. colour change. Oh, wow, So I've worked That's the amazing. pattern out. So you don't actually have to do any yeah. colour changing, where before I was doing like knit two cream, knit three Because silver. there were separate pieces. Yeah, but now I've worked it out, spent ages, <laughs> and on the fox as well. Yeah, no, that, so that's... It, Genius. Yeah. 
I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> that is genius. That's one actually. of my biggest things because it just makes it that much easier. You don't have to change colour in the middle of the row or anything like that. Yeah, I think you get a nicer edge as well. Yeah, with the fold because it's, it's a fold yeah, rather the than a seam. Really nice. Yeah. On the overhead, sorry, I don't, can't remember which numbers are which. <laughs> Left. Look at them. They're friends. Should we have a ram as well? Yeah. Oh, they look really nice all together, don't they? They do look lovely. You sort of feel like you should have all of them. Yeah, I have some customers that have them all over their walls as well. I get sent loads of pictures. So really? Yeah, if you do if you do make one, send me a picture. I love seeing them yeah. so much. So that's kind of why I do it, is to see other people's ones, because I just love seeing them knitted up. Look, there's Louise with all of her heads. Yeah, that's my office, <laughs> my wall it? of heads. There's another row of them above. There's, they're all over the wall. They're, they're oh, so wow. lovely to see, yeah. So how many have you got? I don't know. I couldn't... Oh, Just lots. How many's in that But the picture? lion's the favourite. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the lion's one of my favourites. The fox is one of the first ones I did, and mm. my logo's a fox. I feel quite connected to that one, so I absolutely love the fox. Well, yeah, I know that's my. F I, I love the fox and the fat and the fox hat as well. Well, thank you so much, Louise. It's right. been thank brilliant. And for me. showing us how that all works because it makes such a difference. I think, um, you know, we have a lot of knitters who are new, who aren't so new, but to be able to see how easy it is. Well, you've done all the hard work. Yeah. Pretty you've much. worked out all the maths. Yeah. <laughs> and how it all works. But they are absolutely gorgeous. It's been a pleasure. So hopefully we'll see you again soon. Yeah, thank you very much. So for I'm going to just run very quickly through the kits again. Giant sheep. They have all got names on them. I've just got to find them. So the giant sheep head, that's the one that Louise has got on her desk. Remember, in the kit, you have everything you need. You've got the yarn, you've got um, head yarn, ear yarn, you've got the needles, which are these gorgeous, chunky 9mm needles. We decided to put these in because we thought you might not have them. Um, oh, I've got too many heads. I I dropped something. Um, all the yarn, all the stuffing is in there as well. So there really is nothing that you need to get. The pattern, the backboard is in there as well. And all the little pe bits and pieces for the that have got the eyes and for the sewing up. So everything you need is in there. And it's in this gorgeous bag that's got um, Louise's logo on it as well. Look. That's lovely, isn't it? So the next one we've got, that's the... That's the giant cream. Then there's the giant black. That is on, there's only three of those left. That's on Louise's desk at the moment. It's exactly the same as this kit, only um, it's black. But the kit, everything in the kit is exactly the same. The most popular giant head is the ram head, and surprisingly, he's lovely. Has he got a name? Ram head. Ram head. <laughs> this is why I need help. This is why I need help naming yeah, he them needs all. a name. Yeah. What should we call Ram? Eunice and something. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ram. No, I can't think of anything. Yeah. Send me some messages. Yeah, Let message me know what you Louise and give us some suggestions <laughs> for the Ram's name, Reggie the Ram. So we'll have a think of something funnier. So obviously in the kit you've got everything you need. So you've got the eyes, the nose, all the yarn for the horns, you've got the backboard that goes on the back, all the instructions, and all the stuffing. Um, then we've got mini sheep head in cream, which is this one. There's only five. Oh, it's really hard to turn him around against the camera. There's only five of these remaining. And there are more people who've got mini sheep in their baskets than we have got available. Remember, all the kits come in this lovely cotton duffel bag, which you can keep your project in and then use afterwards for your PE kit. Yeah, oh, you're shopping. Well, you just you knit. They're, they're long enough to have needles in. I use mine as a needle oh, that's bag. That's true. Yeah. Yes, they are long enough for needles. Yeah. Or you can make this for somebody, and you can put it in the bag as its gift wrap. Well, I'm not sure you'd fit the big one in. No, maybe not. You'd fit the baby one in. Wouldn't they're you? really no, hard to gift wrap. If you give ones. it as a gift to someone, keep the bag. Yeah. So there are two, there are more people who've got these in their baskets. I love the way these just this sheep's just peering out from behind yeah. things. Um, the mini ram head, oh, I love this one, I like this yarn. It's so nice to it's, work with it, I really, it? really like it, yeah. I think I prefer, sorry, big heads, but I really love making the minis, so it's just really fun. It's a lovely yarn, isn't it? Yeah. 
Ramsey. Ramsey, yeah. That's Ramsey. Better than Mr. Ram or Ram Ramsey Head. Ram. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lovely one, isn't it? So, um, again, everything you need is in the kit. There's only five left of these. The backboard is slightly different. It's like a shield. Yeah, it's like a trophy board. Like a trophy. Ones, yeah. Your own knitted jam, ram. Responsible taxidermy. Yeah, no animals were harmed. <laughs> no animals were harmed in the making of this stuffed ram's head. It's gorgeous, isn't he? Gorgeous. And then, finally... Foxy, Foxy Fox. And again, he's a lovely yarn, isn't he? It's so he's, nice. It's a re is he river wash. That's river wash, so it's like a cousin of stone wash. But he's kind of like a revamp of all my oldest patterns. So okay. I really enjoyed re knitting him without the colour changes. So if you turn him to the side, it kind of looks like there's a colour change. Yeah. But it's not, it's just the shape of the knit that gives okay. the appearance that they're the two pieces that sew together. So it's a really nice pattern to follow. He's gorgeous. Yeah, someone said you should call him Bo and then he could be called Rambo. Oh, God, it That's gets pretty worse. nice, yeah. I like that <laughs> one. Do you like that yeah, one? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Eunice and Rambo. Oh, yes, we've actually run out of time. So, um, thank you so much for joining us today. Yarn Lane will be back on Wednesday when we've got crocheted animals, even more animals, elephants in pyjamas and pandas and zebras in clothes. That's Wednesday. So, we will see you then. Thank you so much and thank you for Louise for joining us and we yeah. will see you very soon on Yarn Lane.